I'm Wayne from Talk Cars. We get asked a lot about intercoolers, what these do for your car, whether there's much benefit to adding an uprated intercooler to your engine. At the end of this video, we're going to do a little bit of science and look at what the power changes are when you uprate the intercooler and what you can expect that to do to your quarter mile time. So stick around to the end to find out whether it's worth fitting an intercooler to your car. If you enjoy our videos, please bump that like button. It really does help us to get out there and we really do appreciate all the support that we've had. If you want to increase the power, you need to increase the air and the fuel. And one of the best ways of increasing the supply of air to an engine is by fitting a turbocharger. The turbocharger compresses the air as it goes into the engine. And it means that the air is carrying more oxygen. The air is more dense. But as a consequence of that, the temperature increases. Have you ever noticed when you pump up a car tire that the valve and the nozzle from the pump get very, very hot? That's a byproduct of compressing the air, it generates heat. And on a turbo engine, we often see intake temperatures of around 100 degrees centigrade, which is pretty hot. So the intercooler is a way of taking that temperature down. A typical intercooler will cut that in half. We have had a few people ask us if you can fit an intercooler to a naturally aspirated engine. Now, although you can do anything, it's usually not worth it, and it certainly isn't worth fitting one to a naturally aspirated engine, because that's already sucking in air at the ambient temperature, so there's no gain to be had by fitting an intercooler. This mod really is for turbocharged cars, and manufacturers do fit intercoolers, so we're only really looking at improving the intercooling effect. So there are two types of intercooler. There's an air-to-air -air intercooler and there's a water-cooled intercooler. Now the way they work is slightly different and most manufacturers go for an air intercooler. The air intercoolers take the charge going into the engine after the turbo and they pass it through a radiator that's exposed to cold air coming into the front of the car. So it's common to see a front-mounted intercooler where it gets the maximum amount of fresh cold air coming in. Some manufacturers have mounted the intercooler on the top of the engine and they've put a vent in the bonnet which helps to suck cold air directly in through the intercooler. And the advantage of that is a shorter intake path because moving that coolant to the front of the engine whereas typically the turbocharger or the supercharger is way back in the engine you're adding quite a lot of length to the intake so you're going to lose a little bit of intake pressure and add a little bit of drag in the system so the shorter that can be the better. And that's really where the water-cooled intercoolers come into their own because they can be sighted quite near to the engine and they take the heat away from that by means of water where it is then cooled at the front. It's a bit more complicated fitting a water-cooled intercooler. There's a pump to worry about, the coolant, and a lot more piping to think about. You do get the benefit of less of an intake pressure drop by using one. So although they're more expensive and more fiddly, they will generally give you a better result. There's two types of intercooler used. There's a bar and plate, which is typically quite strong, and it helps you maintain higher pressures on the intake and gives you higher boost levels. And there's a tube and fin, which is lighter, it's a little bit more fragile, and it's a lot cheaper. And that's probably the one that most people go for. Now, bigger intercoolers do resist heat soak more than smaller ones. Now, heat soak is where the intercooler itself gets hot, and the hotter that gets, the less effective it is in reducing the intake temperature. So if you've got a bigger surface area, it follows that you'll get better cooling over a longer period of time. But the drawback is the extra volume creates extra drag and reduces the intake pressure. So you've really got to weigh up the size of the intercooler. And actually the design of the intercooler also comes into it. You can go bigger height-wise and you can go deeper and they'll both have an improvement in the cooling. There's no rule of thumb here. The only real way of knowing which is best for your engine is to fit it and measure the intake temperatures and the pressures before and after. And you need to take into account your use of the car as well. Are you doing lots of high RPM driving? You need the intercooler to work hard over long periods of time. Or are you just doing short bursts of acceleration like in everyday driving where maybe you'd overtake something? Taking the intercooler mod further, we've seen setups with fans fitted which draw more air through the intercooler. We've seen spray systems set up that spray something onto the intercooler to aid with cooling and we've seen water and alcohol and various other mixtures to aid the cooling. We've also seen some people use ice around the intercooler to really maximise the temperature drop. 
It's not practical in everyday driving to use ice though. If you had an ice cream van, that would be different. You've got a supply of ice on tap. But the merits of actually driving an ice cream van with a better intercooler are probably lost on most people. So what about the horsepower gain you'll get and the benefits of fitting a turbo? Well, in some real world examples, people have estimated that for a 10 degrees centigrade drop in air temperature, it'll improve the acceleration by about 7%. So that explains why your car feels faster on a cold, frosty morning than it does on a hot, sunny afternoon. The colder air is carrying more oxygen, so you'll be able to burn more fuel. So what does this mean for you and me and our cars? Well, let's take an example of a 200 brake horsepower car, which is sort of right in the middle of average of what our members have, and it's easy to scale up or scale down. And after that, we'll look at the significant gains you get on a much more powerful engine, say an 800 brake horsepower engine. Now, firstly, don't expect massive gains. You're looking at about a tenth of a second improvement. But if you're on the track, or you're running quarter mile times, that tenth of a second is important to you, so it does matter. So if the intake temperature increases, you see a loss in power. So let's take our 200 bhp car as an example. If the intake temperature at the engine is 35 degrees centigrade, that's obviously a winter temperature, you'll actually lose about 3.6 brake horsepower effectively. That would reduce your quarter mile time from 15.95 seconds to 15.85 seconds. Further cool that intake to 10 degrees yields better results. You'll see around 4.8 brake horsepower of a gain and that will drop your quarter mile time from 15.95 seconds to 15.83 seconds. So on a larger 800 brake horsepower engine with much bigger intake temperatures, so let's look at the typical temperatures you'd see on a turbo application of 95 degrees. If you can cut that 93 degree temperature down to 49 degrees, you'll see a power gain of about 53.4 horsepower. That will drop your quarter mile time from 10.67 seconds to 10.45 seconds. That's a 0.22 second improvement. So in the real world, unless your manufacturer has fitted a very badly designed intercooler, you won't see much of a gain. On a typical road car, we would expect to see about 15 to 20 horsepower maximum improvement when you fit that. If your car's been tuned or it's a performance model with a particularly bad intercooler, that power gain might increase to around 30 horsepower. But overall, it's not going to make massive difference to your quarter mile time. So thanks for watching. We hope this has been informative to you. Be sure to drop by our site, say hi to us in our forums. Let us know in your comments what mods you've done to your car and what car you've got. We love to hear from people and that helps us to shape our future content. Thanks for watching. Bye.